iPhone 14 is coming this fall and Hal's coming with me! No, in point of fact, it's iOS 16 that's coming with it. And new design, new eye hole punch, new 48 megapixel bin camera, all the new hardware. But that aside, I feel like we're at a crossroads when it comes to the software. And swear to Jobs, swear to me. it's time for Apple to give us nerds what we really need, a God mode. Let me explain. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. When Steve Jobs just single act of will the iPhone into existence, and the iPad too for that matter, he saw it as a way to make computing even more accessible to the mainstream. People who always felt traditional computers, even Macs, were too confusing, too confounding, too intimidating. He saw it as a way to liberate us from generations of comp sci tyranny. As much as moving computing from the command line to the mouse and pointer to multi-touch, it was also from the institutions to the home, to the pocket, and to do that, he and his living auteur to engineering translator, Scott Forstall, kept everything super direct and super simple. The original iPhone didn't ship just without a terminal or a finder, it shipped without developer frameworks, without apps. The crux, the whole entire point being that the iPhone as a limited managed app console was far more valuable to far more people than is just another open computing device. The way a Nintendo Switch or PS5 is far more valuable to some gamers, the ones who just don't want to have to deal with all the overhead of a full-blown PC. Because there were already Macs and Mac OS and Windows and Android and all the Nixes for us nerds, but nothing at all for the more massive mainstream market. Not until iOS and eventually Chrome OS. But even with iOS over the years from folders and apps, background APIs, Apple was still obsessed with keeping things simple. So simple, AirDrop didn't even get approved until after the way more nerdy Craig Federighi took over the reins with iOS 7. Only then did the gates open even enough for the Files app, extensibility, shortcuts, any form of more advanced functionality at all to slip through. But that also created a very real problem, a very real tension, and not just inside Apple, but among us, users between people who legitimately believed iOS 6 was as far as the iPhone should ever have gone. Like that was it, feature complete, fini, done. And those who felt, who feel to this day, like even iOS 15 still isn't far enough, compounded now by years and years of pro versions of the hardware, but next to nothing at all, even approaching pro versions of the software that runs on it. I mean. Not a decade and a half in, not with Apple providing some background access, but not all, some default apps, but not all, some file system features, but not all, some multi-windowing, but not all, some reader app extensions, but you get the idea. So we're left with this kind of Schrodinger's operating system, too complex for the mainstream market it was originally visionary for, and still too limited for the nerds who comprise maybe, sure, 10% of the customer base but make up 90% of the noise on Twitter and YouTube. You know, like me, maybe like you. But I think I do have a solution that'll kind of neatly sidestep several more years of being trapped in this quantum state. And that solution is a God mode, but also an easy mode. Picture this, setup buddy, the first run process we all go through every time we start up a new iOS device, but instead instantly out of the gate, fade in from the Apple boot logo with a switch, a single switch set exactly in the middle for the way that iOS works now. But then ask us how sophisticated we are and how sophisticated we want our iPhone experience to really be. So if you're new, not tech savvy, or just have zero patience for spending any time at all managing a device that's meant to be saving you time, you can just slide it to the left for easy mode, safe mode, and then skadoosh get something fairly close to how the original iPhone worked back in the day, including limited gestures, less layers, more obvious affordances, built-in apps as default, simplified settings, an utterly uncluttered camera app, and a completely locked down security model. Just iPhone as a console all the way down, Steve Jobs' original visionarying restored. But if you're a power user, a nerd, and have a ton of time on your hands, you can slide it to the right for God mode, expert mode, and then Shazam! you get something much closer to how the Mac works, including full home screen customization, more finder-like files, default app selection for each and every kind of app, top and bottom multi-windowing for apps, multi-stream for audio, a pro camera app, 
with every single still and video bell and whistle. And yeah, Gatekeeper, so we can download and run signed apps straight from the web. Basically, iPhone as a pretty full on open computing platform. And yes, absolutely, make it hard, grueling even, put up all sorts of scary modal warnings. I'm talking worse than what Apple had planned for those Dutch dating apps scary, force us to enter the Konami code sideways, twice, whatever. And to stop evil individuals and institutions from trying to take advantage of people, not naming any names, but Fishers and Facebook and Nova spyware, stuff like that. Maybe it takes a full on restore to flip modes, just a big enough pain in the ass and apps that no one can or will even consider it during a call or when waiting in line for a test. And sure, side effect, bonus feature. It might take the pressure off from tech illiterate legislators who want to regulate Apple down to being just another PC vendor and really annoy the super problematic, kind of cringy, toxic coalition CEOs that just want to break the app store for their own financial benefit. And maybe even it'll resolve some of the long running philosophical disagreements and conflicting incentives deep inside Apple. But it's really not about any of them. It is totally, completely about us about a user base of over a billion iPhone users that really do range from the massive mainstream majority to that passionate power nerd base and giving everyone, maybe not exactly everything we want, but just way more in terms of what we increasingly need. And to get way more involved, maybe even change Apple's collective mind one day, check out the algorithms, neural networks, and machine learning courses on today's sponsor, Brilliant. Basically, all the stuff that the next generation of everything from silicon to software is gonna be built on, but also math and science, and computer science, physics and quantum mechanics, game theory and cryptocurrency, and way more. Because Brilliant is the online interactive STEM learning platform with a growing catalog of courses specifically crafted to help you learn concepts by working through them yourself in a visual hands-on way. And I cannot stress this enough, it is everything that I wish school had been when I was going because it would have been just so much better in so many ways. Like, have you ever wanted to learn how coding works, but you were put off by overly complicated traditional computer programming courses? Well, Brilliant has actual fun interactive challenges that let you shift blocks of pseudocode around, receive immediate feedback and get results. You feel like you're just solving puzzles, but the whole entire time, you're learning how algorithms work. And once you know that, coding becomes way less intimidating, way more accessible. And who knows, maybe you could be part of unlocking the future of iOS 20. Because here's the thing, everyone, everybody starts somewhere and you can get started right now, today, for free. Just visit brilliant.org slash Renee Ritchie or click on the link in the description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So just click on the button on the screen or go to brilliant.org slash Ritchie. Clicking on that button really helps out the channel and so it is hitting up this playlist for way more on the upcoming iPhone 14. So hit up that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.